All right, guys, I almost went live for this one because I am a day late and a dollar short. But here we are. I'm behind on the centers. I'm behind on my draft player profiles. But this is one of the most exciting ones for me. I have been hyped up about Jackson Powers Johnson before anybody else. I can claim that. I don't know if that's true. But I was high on him and Darius Robinson and several other players. You guys know my favorites. Cade Stover, who, man, you see Cade Stover... Cade Stover slipping some ground a little bit because Ben Sennett's coming up so hard. Oh, if we can grab Cade Stover in the fourth round. Oh, I'll be so excited. That's not this video. This video is about three potential centers. I'm, I'm lumping three into one video, guys. Sorry that I'm doing that, but I put out several videos. I don't want to make it too overwhelming. And this will give a good way to really segue into Ryan Poles, what he's doing, trading down. I'm going to I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to guarantee a trade down from nine if Romo Dunze is not there. If Rome's there, we're taking Rome. <laughs> and that's what Ryan Poles is doing. He's got his, con doing, he's got his contingencies. And you can see that. I highlighted the three blue ones. Those are the three centers. And now the rumors you're hearing right now is Jackson Powers Johnson is slipping out of the first round because everyone's loving these cornerbacks and the quarterbacks and the tackles and the edges. Center isn't a premium position, according to everyone. Well, that's fantastic news for me as a Bears fan because we need a center. And how perfect is it that Coleman Shelton is here on a one-year deal with his experience, his leadership, being a vet, that he can take a center under his wing and not have, have to have him do a John Michael Schmitz situation where he's thrust in year one. All that hype around John Michael Schmitz last year, and it doesn't compare to this year. The top three centers in this draft are all better than John Michael Schmitz. You saw he ended up going in the in the late second round while all these guys have been rumored at different times to be first-round prospects. Zach Frazier, probably the least of which. He's, he's never quite cracked that first round. But all three of these guys are high, high prospects. We've had 24 of 30 top 30 visits, two of those locals, so we, we can still have up to eight more. But a lot of big things there. In fact, I didn't put the most recent one on here. I thought I did. My bad, guys. Lad McConkey, wide receiver, has been confirmed to be a top 30 visit. And that falls right into that same range, early second round. So if you haven't checked out my video earlier today about being able to get the haul still by trading down twice, check it out. It's worth it. If you haven't checked out my free talk Tuesday morning video series, check it out. It's worth it. Hate to float my own boat, but there's some good stuff that we're doing right now. And I appreciate all of you checking it out, your support, what you guys are doing for the channel. I love this community. I love Bears fans. I love where this team is heading. I think we have beautiful things unfolding right now with Ryan Poles masterclassing the draft. That it's going to be, everyone's going to be talking about it afterwards. We're going to be talking about it beforehand. One of those things is this trade down. I am convinced now it's happening unless the guy on the far right there is there, Romo Dunze. And that will specifically be so we can get a center in the second round. Well, here's all three of them. Now, I want to preface this one. Now, I did a new stat for all three of them so you guys could see a two-year sample. So, Because you like to see the consistency. And really, Graham Barton had a better year last year. A little bit of injury this year. Uh, but he still graded out very solid. But as a guard slash tackle, he played tackle. I don't know why all three of these guys are listed as guards on these uh, RAS scores, but his RAS score of 9.99 for Graham Barton. Ridiculous. But that's as a guard. Um, and a lot of people think he'll be a center. He could be a multi-role for the Bears. At 6'5", I'm not knocking Caleb, but he might not be the best fit for the Bears. We might want one of the shorter guys for that. Not knocking them at all. That's just the reality of where we are. But very athletic. An athletic freak and played very well. His two-year sack hit hurry, so the sample over two years, is one every 33.95 plays, which means he allowed one one every 33 and a half, well, every 34 plays. And really, most of that's a tackle. So it doesn't really translate the same to Zach Frazier and Jackson Powers Johnson because you see less pressures, less sacks, less hits, less hurries, coming from the center position, more from the outside, more from the tackle position. So that you take that with a grain of salt as we compare these three guys. But very solid. I haven't been as high on him because he's transitioning from the tackle to the guard center position. And I like to see the metrics from where he was to where he's going. So let's look at Zach Frazier now. 
Zach Frazier, you look above, 77.5, PFF grade 80.8 the year before him, 46.5 sack hit or hurry, pressures, another word for pressures, six foot, two and a half, 313 pounds. Uh, all these things show yellow, but I'm not worried about that at all. His RAS score 7.67, I'm not worried about that at all. All three of these guys are solid athletic guys, solid at the center position. In fact, I think Zach Frazier to me would be more of a, pressure, a preference uh, than Graham Barton. But as we know, here's my guy. Jackson Powers Johnson, center, it shows guard there too, out of Oregon. All right, he didn't do all his testing, so he doesn't have a RAS score. Um, no need for him to do all his testing. He is a generational talent in this draft. I've said that multiple times, and I truly believe it. There's there's several that I believe are truly generational talents, and uh, the Bears have a chance to draft several of them. So Marvin Harrison Jr. is one. I think Romo Dunze is right on the verge of that. Um, Joe Alt is one. Jackson Powers Johnson is one. Tyler Newbin at safety position is one. Cooper DeGene, who I was – guys, I was propping him up. I was boasting him. We don't need a cornerback, but I was propping him up, and now he did his individual pro day because he's coming back healthy from his broken leg. Looked like a freaking stallion. I mean, there's some studs in this draft. So that could push – these centers down into the second round. And if the scenario I created earlier today, trading back and getting Washington's picks and trading back up and getting Miami's pick, having two first still and having that 36 pick, if that happens at 36, we're sitting there easily for Zach Frazier, possibly for Jackson Powers Johnson. If you guys didn't see uh, Swifty at um, Senior Bowl, I believe is where it was, he interviewed him. He talked about pancakes. He loves his pancakes. And he's wearing my favorite number, 58. That wouldn't translate into the NFL if we drafted him because obviously Darnell Wright is 58. I already have Darnell Wright's jersey. But that was my number as an edge, as a defensive end in high school. I wore 58, so that's near and dear to my heart. Not the reason I love him, but look at his two-year. This is a two-year sample. Sack it, hurry. Pressure's allowed. One every 213 plays. That's unreal. It's not fathomable. It's unbelievable. This year, 83.6 grade. The year before, 83.1 grade. His pass blocking and his run blocking are both at the most elite level there are. You look at this three, these three guys compared to each other. I gave a little key guide here on the side for you guys because I know a lot of people ask those questions, and I don't clarify a nut. But now the numbers in here for Sackett Hurry are just this last year. And I gave you a two-year sample, so you can go back and look at those if you want. But the pass-blocking efficiency on all three of these guys is elite. And you can see where PFF grades them to be drafted at 24, 25, 32. Well, all those numbers are starting to drop, and everyone's saying all three of these centers are going to be right there in the second round. And there's a gap after that. There's not really another solid center until late third round. So if we want to get a guy that we can really bring on, learn from Coleman Shelton for one year, not be pressured to come in on day one, we got to trade down for that haul. We got to trade down and get more picks and get one of these guys. I prefer Jackson Powers Johnson, but I'm really good with any one of them. And if Zach Frazier is the three option, we still get him at 40, 44, 45. Great. Slam dunk. Let's get our edge. Let's get our center. Let's get our wide receiver all in the first two rounds. If the Bears can pull that off, I am a happy camper. This, to me, is so exciting. So Jackson Powers Johnson did his visit yesterday, the 8th, with the Bears. I'm going to be releasing this video super late at night. Sorry, guys. I've just been doing other videos, and I've been doing other stuff, and I'm trying to record this right before uh, the Cubs game starts, and I'll get it out to you guys. But i uh, been working on it all day. I'm behind the ball and a lot of stuff going on, but this is one I do want to get out because I think it's extremely realistic. I really do. If Romo Dunze is there at nine, I think we take him. If he's not, and I don't think he will be, I really believe we're taking Caleb Williams one, trading back multiple times, picking someone in the mid to late first round, which I would say Chop Robinson or Liatu Latu right now, picking up a center at the beginning of the second round and picking up a wide receiver at the beginning of the second round, whether that's two trade downs or however that works. And then we'll have all four of those picks taken care of in the first two rounds. I really think that's what's going down now. I think that's where Ryan Pohl's head is. I think he's working a masterclass right now. But you look at these guys' grades, 
All of them solid pass blockers. All of them solid run blockers. Jackson Powers Johnson, generational. Truly the guy that we would love to have. I don't know if it's realistic, if he'll fall that far, because I don't see us trading up to get him. I don't see us taking him in the first round. But if we can get our edge, trade back into the second round, get him and get a wide receiver, that's where I'm going now. This is my prediction. I'm getting locked in on this. This is where I really want Ryan Poles to go. So all three of these guys are absolute studs. Love them all. Hope we snag one of them. It would be awesome as a Bears fan. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any questions for a Q&A. There's one thing for the bottom. But let me know which one of these centers, and I'm going to put a poll out, which one of these centers you would want to take. Obviously, I think the answer will be Jackson Powers Johnson. But I'm going to put, if you had to take them a certain position, what you would do. I'll put a poll out for that. So, All right, let me know your thoughts in the comment. Until next time, as always, bear down.